six cups or something, or like you mix the matcha in. Hello. Welcome. Glad you're here. I'm happy to be here. I'm thriving and aliving. <sighs> yeah. I feel like this vlog is going to be, I don't know, I can't predict the future, but um, first of all, this is, as you can see, this is coming out um, in April um, and I haven't released a vlog since my second half of February vlog. I've been doing that kind of like um, half month by half month vlog system for a bit and I thought I would try just doing like a whole monthly vlog. Yeah, I feel like, hello, yes. How are you? <laughs> it's been a while. Has it? I don't know. I have no idea. So there's lots happening. So I've been working, you know, part-time freelance and part-time agency for a while. The agency side of things has kind of been taking up my work life, I guess, because that's like a very structured, like, X amount of hours per week. But, um, yeah, had, had chats with the team this week and uh, the agency is going to be no more. The The owners are moving on to other things and we've all like chatted and we've decided to kind of like call it good there and we're all kind of, we're all gonna go and like split off and do our own things, which is a little bit bittersweet, of course, because I have so much love for the team and it has been like such a great experience for me. I feel like I've grown so much at that company, but yeah, we're all gonna kind of move on come April and um, part of that was like scary for like most of this week, a lot of like uncertainty and things like that, but I've really thought about it and you know, I think this is a really great opportunity for me to continue to, you know, put my all into this YouTube thing and then also, you know, do all of the little art and illustration things and projects and things I've been wanting to pursue for a long time off the back burner and like really pri be able to prioritize it. Um, so I'm gonna go back to freelancing full time. I don't think I'm gonna look for another job. I don't see that for myself. And yeah, we're gonna see how it goes. <clears throat> right now I do like a mix of design and illustration in my freelance work. It's honestly mostly design because that's like, I don't know, it's, more widely needed, it pays better typically. Um, it's it just it's easier to find design jobs than illustration jobs, depending on like how it works coming out of um, this company or whatever, or what like what it seems like, uh, what kinds of clients I have, or what you know, how much um, income I'll be able to like supplement this with. I kind of want to like focus more on illustration. I feel like I have the portfolio now and the grounds to do that, um, to like try and shift gears away from design and more towards illustration because in my silly little artist heart, that's what I am. I'm an illustrator and I'm an artist and I like to draw and I like to do things like that <laughs> more than design as much as like design is such a it can be such a fulfilling thing and I've I feel like I've grown as a designer so much in these past few years. I just love illustration the most. And I feel like that shows. So yeah, I think this is the opportunity to kind of like take a stance in that direction and be like, I'm an illustrator, first and foremost. Which is scary because um I don't know, the going through art school, I came in being like, I want to draw pictures. I'm an illustrator. And then, you know, reality started hitting as I like got into like third and fourth year, second, third, fourth, whatever, of like, hmm, I'm gonna graduate and it's gonna be fucking rough out there. So I better learn some design. So that's what I did. And then of course, out of graduation, I got a design job. Thank God, like I'm very grateful that I, you know, that I made that decision while I was in school to like learn about design and to like build up that kind of muscle in myself and like work on projects that were kind of more design based um, because it has, you know, maintained me up until this point. And 
yeah, it's, um, you can learn a lot from, you know, practicing in different kind of fields within like creative industry things. Um, so yeah, I'm very grateful for that. And I'm sure like, of course I'll, I'll continue to do design in some capacity and take on like select design projects and things like that. But yeah, I'm excited to, I, I feel like empowered now to be like, I want to be an illustrator. You know, it's, it's less scary to say that now. But yeah, I'm excited. I really am. It's, um, it's exciting. I'm, I'm very interested to see what my life is going to look like a year from now. I think it's going to be really good. I say that and then like cut to like devastation. <laughs> I'm kidding. That won't happen. I won't let it happen. Okay. So yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's my update. Hi, 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 hi. Sorry, hi. I don't know why I'm being so weird. I, uh, I guess I haven't talked to you guys in a bit. It literally has been like this for you, but um, today's my day off of work from my agency job. My quickly coming to an end agency <laughs> job. Um, and I'm finishing up editing um, the Houston vlog, which should have come out a couple weeks before this vlog is out. So yeah, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. I'm very happy with it. Um, it's pretty quick. It's like less than 10 minutes, that one, but it's very like quick, choppy, fun editing, um, which I love from time to time. I know my vlogs are like very much the antithesis of that. Yeah, I just wanted to do maybe like a mini sketchbook tour section within this vlog because I do have a bunch of sketchbook scans in the video, um, but they're all kind of scattered throughout, so I thought this would be a nice little thing to show. So, all right, so um, yeah, I had the sketchbook just, I forgot where I got it, maybe it was a gift or something, but I was just using it for notes for a while, but I hadn't really filled it up at all, and it's a pretty like decent sketchbook. The brand is Fabriano. That's my little Let's go with Houston. And then, yeah, this first spread was, you know, the first day I drew my little like travel outfit. Um, I had to walk to the bus. I, I didn't want to bring anything like too heavy or too warm to Houston because it was going to be so freaking hot, but it was still pretty cold um, in Calgary. So the walk to the bus stop was, you know, I like took my hoodie and like tucked them into my leggings and buttoned up my my denim jacket all the way to be as warm as I can um, and then just some doodles of people around me on the plane and then this was at um, the day six coffee co or whatever in downtown Houston we just went there while we were waiting for Moses old neighbor to come and join us and so I just drew a bunch of people that were at the coffee shop and then this was at the, uh, in the hotel that we moved to, still in downtown Houston. Um, I was just, we had time, so I was just sitting down there in the hotel lobby doodling. Saw this uh, chick, I think she must have been in town for um, some work thing, because she was working there. And then I drew Melissa while we were waiting. And um, this was at the Alamo. Um, I just drew a bunch of people that we saw. Okay, so this is back in Houston. So after this point, um, this is all the drawing that I did actually while I was there. But then at home, once I got home, because it was like, that trip was so packed. Um, yeah, once I got home, I looked through all my photos and then added a few more pages in the sketchbook. So these, this couple I saw at um, the water wall outside the gallery in Houston. This is just a picture of Melissa going up the stairs um, at post. And then we stopped and got a drink at Captain Foxheart's. Uh, Bad News Bar, very cool spot if you're ever um, like downtown Houston. Um, it's very cool. You have to like, it's a speakeasy, so um, you have to like go through the door. Uh, it's like for a law office. It's the less obvious looking one. There's two doors to two different law offices. It's the less 
flashy one. Um, and then, yeah, these are all sketches from MFA H. Um, it was very cool. A lovely surprise. It was their um, free night, which I think I forgot about. So I was expecting to pay the like $19 admission. Um, but yeah, these are just drawings of some of the pieces that I saw and enjoyed. Big fan of drawing sculpture. Um, it's kind of like drawing from life, but very defined and well lit um, kind of shapes and forms there. Some more sculptures I saw. This one was of a painting, and then these two are sculptures. And then last page, just a couple, uh, a Buddha, and then this little wooden boy sculpture thingy statue <laughs> that I saw. And that's it. Um, I kind of wanted to fill in more, but you know, it is what it is. That's all I really needed for the vlog. So that's what I did. That's what it is, baby. They didn't have it. Hello? Hi there. Um, I just wanted to check uh, if you guys had stock on an item. Yeah, so at this last one, it said in stock on the website. Um, but they didn't have it in stock. <laughs> so, yeah, I think she's checking the back for me now. Because the website says in stock. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye, you as well. Nice. Let's go get it. Cooking section! <laughs> I don't know if anybody cares about cooking. Um, I'm, um, you know, I, I added like little cooking sections when I had my little YouTube resurgence in 2020, um, thanks to quarantine. And I haven't really touched it since because I feel like when I added in those cooking portions of um, my vlogs back then, it like kind of ruined it for me because I hated it. I just like ruined fucking random cooking bullshit for no reason. But then, you know, I saw other vloggers like put some cooking in their vlogs. I'm like, maybe I should put some cooking in because I cook, you know? Um, not a lot. R well, uh, enough to feed myself. Um, but today we're very simple. Just gonna be making Golden curry. Um, this has been a comfort food for me since childhood. My mom would make this like, I don't know, every like couple of weeks or something. And whenever she would, the whole house would smell like curry. And I would come downstairs and I was like, oh, did you make curry? 
because it's so good. Um, if you haven't tried Japanese curry before, highly recommended. Best curry IMO. Um, but basically, you just get some potatoes, carrots, onions, and honestly, whatever other vegetable you have, and then either pork or chicken or beef. Again, whatever meat you have. Um, yeah, I usually do onions, carrots, potato, and pork. This time I'm gonna be adding in some zucchini because I have zucchini from the last thing that I made. I made gumbo when I got back from Texas because I was really craving gumbo. I had, um, I tried like a couple gumbos when I was down there. So fucking good. And it just seems like a good um, meal to make in like a large portion, which is what I like to do. I like to cook like one giant thing a week kind of thing and then just eat it all week. I'm, I'm not picky about eating the same thing for seven days straight, so it works for me. It's easier and it's cheaper. So yes, golden curry. Um, grab your giant pot, have your rice going. I recommend Cal Rose rice, of course. And then yeah, chop up all of your veggies and meat. Um, I like to do like half inch to an inch diced and then start with your onions and meat. Cook that up with some oil in your pot. Add in the, the vegetables. Cook that up until the onion is translucent or I don't know, the veggies are like good and kind of cooked, I guess. Um, and then follow the instructions on the back of your box. This box says to use five cups of water. I know some of the boxes, depending on the brand that you buy, will say six cups of water. They're lying to you. If you put six cups, it's probably gonna be too watery um, and not like thick enough. So um, five cups is usually what I do. And then, yeah, bring to a boil and then follow the instructions, whatever, whatever, simmer for a while. And then, very important step, add a little, of ketchup and what else do I add? Like a little plop of soy sauce. Um, without that step, without adding the ketchup and the little bit of soy sauce, I find the, the, the curry tastes a little like it's missing something, you know? Um, but with that step, it tastes like Japanese curry. So don't forget that step. And then ta-da, you have your beautiful, delicious, yummy, comforting, good yummy curry. Enjoy. Hi. Hello, exposure. Welcome to my face. <laughs> um, what's up? Good morning. Good morning. It's, uh, hopefully the sound of my kettle going in the background isn't too distracting. Um, it is the weekend. Woohoo! Here's Friday. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Last night, um, I did a little, you know, self check-in little journaling session. I like went through my um, book about Taoism. Um, I kind of like reviewed a few of the chapters that, chapters that I had already read. Um, just because, I don't know, the past like little while I've been feeling a little bit on edge, a little bit anxious, a little bit off. Um, and when I feel that way, but I know like nothing really is wrong in my life. I just kind of like, or I tend to just kind of like put off doing anything about it. I just like try to ignore it and continue on with my life because nothing's wrong. Um, but then like I find myself like going to bed at night and feeling, I don't know how to, how to describe it. Um, I've experienced panic attacks before and they have like a very specific feeling um, I haven't had a full-blown panic attack in a long time, in a few years, thankfully. But like I feel the feeling of one 
that if I was like super anxious in that moment, one would come on. Um, so I don't know, like a few a few nights that I've been going to bed, I've like felt it, and I was like, hmm, that's probably not good. So maybe I should like check in with myself and like see what's up, or you know, kind of nurture that side of myself in in some way. Um, yeah, when I say check in with myself, I mean like, I just like sit down with like a little notebook and kind of write through my thoughts and any, any like anxieties that I have, I kind of like write down the reasons and then try to like rationalize myself or like comfort myself that, you know, those anxieties aren't real or aren't like, um, things that I should actually be afraid of. And yeah, I think it's just, you know, all the uncertainty of what's going on with my work life and like going back into freelance and having to think about that. But also I'm going to be going to Japan for a month. So it's like, um, there's a bit of like stagnation that comes along with that. Like I, 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 I don't want to take on too much responsibility before my Japan trip because I know that like while I'm there I want to just like kind of disappear for a month and really like be able to be present there and experience my trip and enjoy. Um, so I know that everything's fine, everything's gonna be fine, it's gonna be great, I'm gonna have work, I'm gonna find more illustration clients like I want after I get back from Japan and Maybe it's self-sabotage, maybe it's... Uh, I don't know, I feel like I don't deserve to be having my dreams come true. Um, I have a, like, I have a feeling that keeps telling myself that I, uh, I can't, like, do anything until I get back. And that's procrastination, because I'm afraid of succeeding, I guess. <laughs> It's a pattern, it's an old pattern that I'm falling into because I'm, I'm, I think because I've been ignoring or putting aside my like, myself and my like mental health and things like that and checking in and, and, and paying attention to my anxiety and things like that. So yeah, I did that last night and you know, becoming aware of it or talking it through with myself or somebody else or just talking it through, kind of hashing it out for myself, laying it all so that I can see what's going on is the first step in like being aware of it so that I can move past it and figure it out. So yeah, <laughs> that's good. And so I'm feeling like very like chill this morning, a little bit um, reflective. I like have things that I want to do this weekend, but I'm also kind of like, being okay with um, going a little slowly because I know that, that I'm, I'm kind of like going through a little thing right now and I need a bit of kindness. So. Alrighty, you know what it is. It's voiceover time, baby. Um, as of the, the time that I'm recording this voiceover, I'm like just recovering from a cold. So excuse me if my voice is a little bit off, but yeah, for this section, I'm just working on an illustration based off an, off of an old, um, uh, sketchbook piece that I found. I think I drew it in like 2021 or 2022 or something like that. that and I just found it in a, in a scan that I did of, of one of my sketchbooks. And I really liked it and I thought that, you know, it would be like a cool thing to kind of remake and polish out a little bit. Um, I did it in the style of the, those uh, demon fashion illustration thingies that I was working on like a couple vlogs ago. I'm a big fan of this style. I think like it's really found like a nice settled in kind of vibe with me. Um, I'm literally just using a expanded version of 
the HB pencil on Procreate. Um, I just like duplicated the, the default one that came and then expanded the maximum size so I can get bigger and like really uh, shade in like some textures by like putting it to the maximum size and just like slanting my Apple Pencil and just like uh, adding that kind of grainy texture that it has when it's really big. Um, but yeah, like these these kinds of illustrations when I do them in this style is like really pretty simple. I'm really leaning on like my understanding of anatomy and um, just focusing in on the line work and getting like the drawing down really well because that's what I'm the most comfortable doing. And I feel like my, my pieces end up being the best when I focus on those uh, kind of parts of a drawing. And then when it comes to color, um, I feel like the, the drawing itself is detailed enough enough that the that the uh, <laughs> that the coloring can be like very flat and simple and um, I really tend to like that that style of coloring anyways um, so yeah I feel like I've really you know come into my own here with this style and it's something that I'm feeling very comfortable about um, especially recently as I've been exploring it a little bit more so yeah there it is hope you enjoy that about <laughs> exposure and aperture. <laughs> I usually leave my camera set to... Uh, okay, so so shutter speed for video, you're supposed to do double what your frame rate is. I shoot at uh, 24 frames per second. So that's 50-ish shutter speed. And then aperture, I like putting it on the lowest setting because I like the... so aperture... Um, is like how open or closed the thingy, lens thingy is. And so I believe the smaller the number, the more open it is. So like, if you imagine like an eyeball, if your pupil goes open, it's letting in more light. Um, but then like the stuff in the background gets blurry, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm like talking out of my ass right now, but basically, yeah, I go for low aperture because I like the like, um, the very like, deep separation of foreground and background. Um, however, if the aperture is super open, if you go into like a super bright setting, like a, I don't know, snowy area, like what happened in my last vlog or like super sunny place, then everything will be blown out and like your like exposure can't compensate for that. I don't know if that's actually correct, but like whatever, your, your camera freaks out and it's like taking in too much light. Cameras also have like an expo exposure compensation setting so i guess that's for like if you want a low aperture to get the like foreground background separation you can like play with the exposure comp so right now i just like put it down a bunch to make it uh, darker or you can bring it up a bunch 
So, because sometimes I notice like, especially with this light here, you can see like some of my highlights are uh, getting a little blown out. Let me, okay. So this is zero exposure compensation. And it's not that bad. Like, I don't know, I'm looking at this point, but if I bring it down like two thirds, I kind of feel like that's a little bit better. And then like, I don't know, my goal in the camera is like get as like much information and as much like kind of flatness as I can straight out of the camera so that like anything that I want to add on top can be added on in post um, or like with coloring afterwards. So if like things are blown out because it's too exposed, then you lose a lot of detail and same with the other way around. If it's too dark, then you like don't pick up the detail that's in the shadows. <laughs> it's something that like I need to remind myself to pay attention to, especially if I'm trying to vlog like on the go is when I like tend to make these mistakes because I'm not thinking about like my camera settings at all. Um, the reason why I keep my camera on manual is because um, I use a setting on my, so my camera, the camera that I use is a Canon SL2 or Rebel 200D, I think. So I don't know, professional filmmakers and cinematographers, when they shoot, they shoot in something called like log or C log or something. And if you see, if you've seen, if, if you've seen that before, it's basically like, like it flattens everything. Everything's like super grayed out, super low contrast, super like whatever. Um, which acts as like a very neutral base to like add coloring on top of or like bring highlights up and bring shadows down so you can like really have a lot of control over um, like the contrast and like the look of the, the video. Um, so with my Canon, um, it doesn't have C-Log. I think there's a way to get that on there, but it's not free. Um, so in the Canon, there is like different um, shooting profiles or presets or settings or whatever and so you can make a custom one and so what I've done is just like put it to like the lowest contrast the lowest saturation whatever whatever just to like get as close to neutral as possible it's like nowhere near what actual like log looks like but it's good enough for me I guess um so yeah that's that's what I'm trying to get used to with my uh exposing and things like that as well. So yeah, little camera talk, <laughs> uh, nobody asked for. Um, but yeah, I, I went to go pick up some ceramics, uh, a couple vlogs previous to this one. I went to um, try wheel, wheel throwing for the first time with my, uh, with my team. And yeah, I went to go pick up all of our pieces today. So I'm gonna show you mine. Let me go get it. Okay, so I think it's these ones. Okay, hold on, let me, <laughs> let me unbox this. Okay, so excuse the harsh lighting. I kind of wanted to wait until um, morning to do this just for the lighting, but I, I, I'm, I'm impatient. I want to see they're wrapped up all nice. We did these at Workshop Studios, um, if you live in Calgary. Oh my god, so cute! No way! <gasps> I made a little, um, I don't know, in my mind it's like one of those tiny little uh, teacups that you drink like matcha out of or something, or like you mix the matcha in. And I put a little face in it. Oh, so cute! Oh my god, I love it! <laughs> and then this is the other one! Oh, so cute! Okay, it's a little rough. Maybe I'll like, maybe there's a way that I can like sand that down or something. But yeah, this one I wrote uh, tea in, ocha. And yeah, they're both just kind of like cute little, little guys. Oh, so adorable. I'm so happy. <laughs> wow. Oh, so cute. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I, Got a package just now. I ordered the Moment Cinebloom filter. Um, I first kind of caught wind of Moment, I don't know, a few, a few years ago, kind of when I was into like film photography and things like that. I must've got suggested ads for them when I was looking up like Lightroom presets and things like that. But yeah, I've had my eye on Moment for a 
little second and I was kind of looking into um, one of my favorite things to do when I travel or when I like do things is take film photography and you know film just kind of isn't it right now it's super hard to find affordable film and you know developing film has always been a bit of an expense if that's the the way that you do things so yeah anyways I thought, you know, for Japan, I really want to be able to take like really nice film-like photos. And so, I don't know, one of the things that I want to do when I get to Japan is to like look for a secondhand Fujifilm X-Series. Um, I know they're like super in demand right now just because of their film simulations. But um, yeah, that's one of the things I want to do. But also I was kind of looking into like for my video footage because I'm going to be taking a lot of video while I'm out there. Um, I was looking into like ways that I could like, you know, maybe stylize my video a little bit. And then I remembered that Moment has this um, Cinebloom filter. If you have looked into it, I'm sure you know that everybody raves about this. Um, it's basically a diffusion filter. There's like a few different ones on the market um, by different brands. But this one, I don't know, I like Moment. It, they seem like a really cool... Um, kind of company and yes it just arrived i'm so excited to try it oh my god um i don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it because it seems like it's most prominent when it's like super sunny or dark and the light sources are very uh prominent or whatever very obvious it comes in this case very cool case opens up Ooh, look at her oh gorgeous just watch me like drop it right now I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna put it on right now. Okay, are we on? <laughs> you like literally can't see much difference at all. Ew. I guess you can kind of see it here. Okay, let me point this at some sun and then hopefully we can see. I got the 10% diffusion filter. Um. I mean, maybe <laughs> it's, um, I really didn't want to get the 20% because just like based off of people's, um, reviews and like the comparisons of the two, you know, anyways, I feel like this will be more apparent. Like if I'm out and about and filming outside in natural light, I feel like that's where it kind of really becomes like hazy and kind of more apparent with the light sources and things like that. <sighs> anyways. Very like anticlimactic kind of experience right now, but cool, great. Um, it's this week is my last week um, working for my company. Um, like I'm still gonna be working for them freelance, but this is my first, uh, my last week kind of like being an employee of them. And yeah, so I feel like, I don't know, last weekend was kind of weird. I felt kind of weird. I feel like this transition period has made me feel like I'm a little bit in like limbo right now. Um, especially with my trip coming up to Japan, like I don't want to take the next step with like, trying to find new clients or like doing a bunch of stuff um, work-wise because like I'm just gonna be missing for a month basically. So if I like take on too much responsibility before I go for my trip, then you know, it's just kind of not like the greatest look to take on like some new clients and then disappear for a month <laughs> right away. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm telling myself that, you know, it's a good break for me to take um, and I don't want to be stressing about like a bunch of new work things or new budding work opportunities while I'm in Japan. Like I, I really just want to go there and like unplug and focus on, you know, the trip and enjoying myself and enjoying my time there. But yeah, that's, that's kind of my situation right now, which is cool and fine. Um, today's Tuesday and I don't really have anything 
made for my video this week that's meant to go up on Friday. So trying to decide if like I have the energy to like put something together and like immerse myself in that process because I really do like making videos and I love editing videos. But in times like this when I'm concerned with work and I have a bunch of shit to get done to wrap up my like employment with with my uh, agency it's tough to like think about that like separate creative stuff we'll see who knows maybe i'll surprise myself i've done that before <laughs> but also you know i'm telling myself that it's okay if you know my friday video comes all comes out on a saturday every once in a while that's okay i'm human you know i i can't always be perfect like cl clockwork with these things. So. Hi. Oh. <coughs> this is a uh, hello. I don't I don't mean to have all of my shots be in the same fucking spot every single time, but that's just what ends up happening sometimes. Um I I went and got myself a little bit sick. So <laughs> it's all it's basically the end of the month and so I'm fit I'm thinking I'm going to wrap up wrap up the vlog here. It's really weird uh vlogging over the course of an entire month because I feel like my vlogging gets really broken up throughout the month because like a month is a very long period of time and yeah, so it feels weird. It's like hard to remember what I've vlogged so far this month. Yeah, tried out the the month-long format, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue with that. I think for April I will, just because April is going to be a short month for me. Um, we'll see. I, um, yeah, so, so my video is supposed to be going up tomorrow for this week, and I don't have it. I don't have this week's video, and yeah, this week has been um, a lot. It's like, it's kind of stressful in that, you know, this is my last week working for my agency. And so we're trying to wrap up a bunch of our projects. And for some reason, just that like major career change is weighing on me. I guess that's like supernatural, super natural, not supernatural um, for me to feel like a little bit <coughs> A little bit overwhelmed and on top of that look at me I'm sick so <laughs> yeah I really don't think it's in the cards for me to um, to throw together this week's video <coughs> yeah if I if I think about it too hard I do feel a little bit like disappointed in myself for you know missing a week after going so strong every single week for like the past few months but you know this is kind of a it's a bit of a special circumstance. Like I feel like I'm, I'm okay to give myself the grace to be kind to myself here and allow myself to just chill for a week. Yeah, I was debating, you know, maybe trying to throw something together today, tomorrow. Um, but I'm wrapping up a project that needs to be done by tomorrow for my agency because I also need to bring my laptop into the Apple Store because they have a part that they're only going to hold for me for so long. Yeah, anyways, it's just um, all these things in my life this week have just stacked up against me. And I think it's okay to allow myself to, you know, give myself a little bit of a break um, for YouTube this week. And then I'll get right back on it next week. <laughs> it's hard to, like, talk. <coughs> anyways... Um, as I'm taking a break, working on that project that needs to get done, um, I thought I would whip up a little, a quick little drawing of a frog. <coughs> Dude, I can't talk. <laughs> to, to post as a community post? Wow, I am struggling right now. <laughs> I hope this doesn't look like so sad. <laughs> like I'm really trying, I'm fine, I swear. Yes, so I, I, I'm gonna draw a little drawing of a frog 
to post as a community post on YouTube. I've never posted before that, in that way, so that'll, I don't know, kind of be cool. I like it when I see the people that I'm subscribed to post little community post thingies just to like say hi or whatever. So I think I'm gonna do that and um, <sighs> yeah, I'll, I'll end it there. Um, again, apologies for the lack of video last week. I guess when this vlog comes out, it would have been last week that there was no video, but here you go, this is why. And um, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Um, hopefully it was, it was a very like meaty, enjoyable one. I think it was good. I think there's like some good stuff in there, so, um, <coughs> okay, I think, I think that that's my signal to stop talking now, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all doing well. I appreciate you a lot for being here and for supporting me. Yeah, back to regular scheduled programming. Thank you for your patience. <coughs> okay. Cue the frog clip. Bye. Bye-bye. That's not how I end my things. See you guys in a bit.